Hey guys, how you doing? Danny Stewart here for BassJapanDirect.com with another Lincoln Sound Review. And today's bass is this uh, gorgeous tune TWX5 from the uh, late 90s. I believe it's late 90s or early 2000s. Uh, made down in Osaka. Um, and uh, this has a, a gorgeous uh, mahogany core with a lace wood top and back. I've left the back open so you can see the, the innards there. It's got its own custom preamp on an 18 volt circuit. Um, and that's got their uh, <coughs> three band EQ coupled up with their tune soap bar t uh, pickups. And on the rear pickup now, just in the, uh, the switch here as well, which is series parallel or normal and boost mode, if you like. So now just in uh, series mode. Boost. You know, this is great. To turn the treble down. It's a sick sounding uh, rear pickup sound that is. Love it. So you've got a lot of scope there and the mid itself, you know. The mid has a lot of um, low mids on it. So, um, yeah, it, it's a great sounding preamp. Sounds great for slap as well, everything dialed up in the, uh, uh, in, in the uh, parallel mode. So yeah, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, it just sounds perfect. Uh, just everything dialed up. It's it's a great tone, lovely voicing. And series mode. Beautiful, it's beautiful stuff. You know, front pickup is great as well. So smooth as well. Yeah, it's very, very smooth to play low action because um, the neck is, is 
really well made. Excellent fret work. Great, um, three, uh, it's a, you know, three-piece quarter sawn uh, maple neck on this. Brass nut, you know, um, and the way it's engineered to work with the bridge. It just means you can get the low action, very flat neck. Flat and straight. So I mean, you know, you got all of this scope on it. Let's let's look at it in a bit more detail now, um, without having this filter on, on the backing track there. All right, guys. So um, I put this this riff down earlier. It's inspired by the uh, uh, protests I've been seeing rising up in, in the U.S. in various states uh, regarding the lockdown. Um, I really hope that doesn't escalate into anything violent. And, um, I know there have already been some uh, terrible incidents uh, because of this. Uh, it, it's really sad to see. So stay safe out there, guys. Right? Please. So I, I'm going to start on the, the rear pickup here with everything dialed up and um, in the parallel mode. So, now let's go um, just into series. Back to parallel. Back to series, just so you can hear the difference there. Just the bits um, left engaged. So that's 
rather nice. Is go on to the uh, front pickup and I'll dial everything up. Actually, I'll have the, the, the treble removed and I'll be in parallel mode. So, bass and mid dialed up, treble um, completely knocked out there. We need our freedom. play a simplified version in just the uh, Yeah. 
Yeah, so you get the idea. Um, you know, take the treble down, let's do some finger style. got a, a vast array of tonal capability um, it's an 18 volt circuit it, it plays beautifully it's got amazing craftsmanship and uh, quality so you can't go wrong it's available now so I'm going to move on to the lesson section of this video next okay so lesson portion of this video now so we're going to talk about uh, the double thumbing technique that's employed in that riff and the tabs are up on my website along with the backing track um, that you can download and practice to uh, and notation as well of course in PDF format so um, follow the link if you want to get those okay and subscribe um, so um, I'm using a double thumbing technique in this of course um, and it's pretty it's up to speed um, it's quite a a pacey piece this is so um, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily that difficult um, because the because you can use minimal movement movement in your technique but the thing that is difficult is increasing the intensity without speeding up or slowing down so we're going to focus on how to uh, how to control that using your technique. Um, so I'll tell you how I do it. Uh, but first, let's learn the riff. Let's break it down. We're over a D minor nine, and um, we are using the seventh as an approach note to the root. Actually, the seventh and the root are almost like pedal tones or the fulcrum um, of this this bass line. So we're using down and up strokes the whole time. So I don't really need to tell you uh, about the right hand because it's, it's the same all the way through, down, up, down, up. Okay, so we're going C, D, C, D. And then we're going F, D, C, D. Again, C, D, C, D, F, D, 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 C, D, E flat, A. Um, and I'm using this position um, down here because I, I find that's just the most comfortable for me. And um, you know, and then building up. So once you got that riff, I would suggest you start very slow without a metronome or drum machine, and practice just getting it under your fingers and getting the technique down. So let's talk about the technique now because you're going to need to to have that correct before moving on. So, um, the double thumbing technique, it should come from the wrist. It doesn't come from the elbow. It doesn't come from the thumb itself. Although, some of you might 
have developed a technique that works like that. If that works for you, that's great. Um, I, I can't do that myself. Just coming from the thumb, I need to use my wrist. And um, what I do is to have the, for me, the most, uh, the, the optimal position for my right hand is like this. It's diagonally across the strings so that my thumb from the, the joint to the tip of the thumb runs parallel to the string. That way I can get, I can get the traction and speed that I need without straining my arm. If I'm like this, it's, it, it's no good. It, it, well, it doesn't work for me anyway. Uh, it's hard to get accuracy. Um, and it starts to hurt as well. So this for me is the most comfortable position. Um, and I would suggest it for you if you, if you haven't already established your own method of doing it. So just so you can see my arm position, it's like this. There is a gap between my wrist and the strings. And the wrist movement is, is it's small, it's, it's fractional. But, but it is coming from the wrist entirely. Right, so that's, that's the first step. Um, so you want to have a relaxed hand to start with. Okay. Um, and then what I do to build intensity is I actually stretch out my fingers because what happens is that increases the tension in the muscles, makes it the rigidity of my hand becomes more rigid, and therefore I can I can play the notes much harder uh, because the hand is rigid. So uh, what that 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 results in an increase in volume, um, dynamic output. So if you watch, um, watch my hand. It's relaxed. Okay. I'm gradually going to open it, and it gets louder. So that's how I control the volume up and down. It's almost as if like the, the more I open my hand, the louder it gets. And and the more I relax my hand, close my fingers, not into a fist, but just 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 relax, the the quieter it gets. So, you could experiment with that and try it yourself. Um, but I suggest starting the exercise out very slow. Once you've established the technique and the riff itself, I would start out at, say, 80 BPM and then build it up to speed gradually, adding 10 BPM each time. Um, I think the, the riff is 140 BPM or something close to that. Yeah, I believe it's something close to that. So um, you could experiment with that, gradually build up speed. Um, and if you've got the software, you can download the backing track and actually slow it down um, however you want. The backing track will be uploaded with the, uh, it will also be labeled with the, the BPM so that you can, you can easily import it into software that could slow it down. 
um, if you want to do that. So there you go. Thanks for watching, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and lesson. And don't forget to sub at my website um, in order to get the uh, the backing tracks and tablatures. Cheers.